We are back with another edition of the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. I am Derek Rackley. I'm back with my guys, DJ Shockley and Dave Archer. And as you can see, the guys just got a little bit different feel to their bodies. They got some smiles on the face because we're coming the first episode of this podcast in 2021 after a Falcons victory. Yes, so we will talk about some of the excitement that happened in that. But before I get to the guys, let me give you a quick rundown of what we are going to cover in this episode episode first of all i'm going to ask the guys to call their shot they're going to give us one play maybe one player that happened in last weekend's game that they felt like changed the momentum and put things in the favor of the atlanta falcons we'll also take a look at did the falcons turn a corner in that game maybe this the performance is something that they can build on for weeks ahead or maybe the guys feel differently we'll get into a debate maybe maybe not on whether the defensive performance from Sunday is something that we can expect for weeks to come, or maybe that was a one week affair. I'll get the guy's opinion on that. Maybe we'll have a little bit of argument. We will have a little bit of a story time where we get into a situation where maybe DJ and Arch can tell us a similar scenario. Maybe they got their season started off on a slow note, but then they were able to move things forward throughout the rest of the season. Then of course we will finish by taking a look ahead at the Falcons next opponent as they get into week four of the NFL season. So, Without further ado, DJ, I'm going to start with you. We're going to get in to call your shot. Again, the rule here is not really rules, got? okay? These are just kind of the policies, got? maybe the guidelines. We need you to call your shot. So you need All to right. pick one player or one play that you felt like made a difference in Sunday's game, maybe turn the momentum, put things on the side of the Atlanta Falcons. So with that being said, ready, set, go. Just see that? That was a crossover right there. And now I'm going to Saw shoot it. the shot. Cameron Nizalek. I called the special teams out last week. How about this? Six punts, average 47 yards, and three inside the 20. Good Cameron call. Nizalek, that's my dude. I cannot I love shit. it, DJ. That yes. I want yes. to. Yes. Bring it, Archie. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 This, this is me pull the punter. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> This is the interesting part about a segment like this, Dave, because you go second, I'm going to go third. You got to be ready, right? Yeah, because what yeah. happens if DJ takes the one that you were going to go with? So this is kind of a stall tactic too. I see, Arch, I can I'm tell that. That's pretty good. Another one. <laughs> really good by you. All right. Really good. Cause... Okay, your turn, Dave. Call your shot. What did you think did, from Sunday's he game? He didn't think you'd take his punter. Yeah. Great <laughs> call, by the way. Nyslack was monster. Dante Fowler with another late sack strip yeah. forces the ball out, forces the third and 19 with like two that. minutes to go, like and it provided the opportunity for Atlanta to get the ball back to drive down and kick the game winner. Yeah, not only did he get the strip sack, but he was held on the play too. There yeah. was a penalty, so that shows how talented and how good of a two for playmaker. two, Rack. We two for two, baby. Two for you two. Bring it. And guess what, guys? I don't even have to think about it because when you're the host of the show, you can kind of twist the rules oh. a little bit. So I'm actually going to go with a drive of the game. Oh. I'm going to say it was the Falcons' touchdown drive in the fourth quarter, right after the Giants had put a touchdown on the board, yeah. and I'm talking about covering field. 15 plays, 67 yards, and how about taking time off the clock to yeah. eight minutes, 40 seconds off the clock, not to mention Matt Ryan goes nine of 10 passing on that drive for the Atlanta Falcons to answer. So often it's so important how you answer a touchdown drive. True. They tied up the game. And we obviously know what so the you can also was. do See, that so as the host is you can expand on your thoughts right, a lot longer right. than you and I right. got to. He got to talk we a lot were longer. Shooting our shot to be very concise. <laughs> so okay. much for the precise. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That, so was good heat. that was heat though, Rack. I like it. I like it. All right. So good. We got we got to call our shot a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's let's get into this a little bit more, Dave. I want to see my question for you is this. Did the Falcons turn a corner? OK, sometimes it's easy in any competitive sport, especially when you get off to an 0 2 start to say they won a game. OK, they've arrived right now. They're going to end up building on this performance. But I think there was things to build on in this performance. So did the Falcons turn a corner in this game? Was there enough in this as far as meat and potatoes for you to say, okay, now I see this team taking off? I think there are a number of things that come out, and I'll try to be concise and, yeah. and try to keep some things together. The early sack by Jarrett on the first drive of the game creates another uh, long yardage situation. Atlanta can play zone, forces the field goal. That's the second time we've right. seen interior pressure. Yeah. Remember, it was Marlon Davidson last week got the sack. This time, Grady Jarrett gets single and gets the sack. I mentioned Dante Fowler, back-to-back -back weeks. Late in the second half, 
the, the, the one last week was in the third quarter. Mm-hmm. This was in the fourth quarter, a sack that created a long yardage situation. I think you're seeing that become a little bit more of a pattern. Interior pressure – Edge pressure, something we have not uh, noted Ooh, or yeah. seen very much of. I think that is is turning a corner. Now, if we turn the corner completely defensively, it's not happening for four quarters. Yeah. Happened in the second half of this game. It happened in the third quarter of the game against Tampa. You could might even say the second half against Tampa. So two second half performances when you look at no plays of 15 yards or more last week for Tampa in the second half after eight in the first half, and in this week, only two plays of 15 yards or more in the second half for the Giant team that had six in the first half. So second half performance certainly turning the page for us. Yeah, and obviously Dave, you know, as as the two quarterbacks here, Arch decides to go a little bit more defense Defense, DJ, did you see anything offensively that you felt like maybe the Falcons are turning a corner? Because again, we welcomed in an offensive minded head coach that we felt like was going to take the offense to the next level through the first two weeks not really seeing that on the field but offensively were there pieces there that you saw that turned the corner a little bit rack i'll say this i say the dna of this offense i believe is there i don't know if we have turning the corner but we're absolutely on the street and headed in the right direction i'll say that um when you think about some of the things that happened in this ball game you talked about your drive of the game, 15 plays, you were consistent, you did what you need to do, you ran the ball when you had to at times, you picked up positive yardage, uh, some guys stepped up on the outside. And then the most important thing to me, I think, when I think about this, Archie, is what's going on in the red zone the last two weeks. Three or four last week, two or two this week, you were scoring touchdowns. When you get down there, you're converting them. And I think that's a big part of – starting to turn the corner is, yeah, we've always moved the football really well from 20 to 20, but once you got inside the red zone, you had an issue here or there that where you start kicking field goals. So I love the fact that I think the DNA of this team is there where you're trying to make sure the run and the pass is all together. Uh, I did a breakdown that I think a lot of people are going to see, especially in the run game. There was a second and one, and I can't, I think it was in a second quarter. Second and one, Arch, you probably – I know you remember this. Uh, Matt comes up to the line of scrimmage. He goes, can, can. He changes the play. And they get a 10-yard gain by Cordell Patterson going to the left side. There's a safety that comes down to the right side. Matt changes the play, goes to the other side, and it is perfectly blocked. And when I say the DNA of it, everybody has a hat on a hat, and the first guy that gets to Cordell Patterson is the safety. Mm. And that is what I think everybody should expect from the Falcons' run game when it looks the way it's supposed to. And then we know the pass game will come along and will continue to build. So I think the DNA is there. I think the consistency is starting to get there, but you just have to do it uh, at a higher tick. But I absolutely believe we are on the right street, heading in the right direction. I love the way that you did that, DJ. You you, you definitely build it on that. We haven't turned a corner yet, but at yeah. least we're on the right street. No doubt. It could be different. No we could be in a different zip code, right? <laughs> no DJ? doubt. And, that, and that's, that's a problem. You know, you, it's interesting. You mentioned a couple things. You mentioned scoring in the red zone. And – I thought it was a great play call when the Falcons got down on the goal line situation. They tried to run it one time. They got, they got stopped short. And what does Arthur Smith do? He's got a heavy package on the field. He comes back with play action and he slips Lee Smith out into the end zone. I don't think the defense was expecting, expecting it. It was a great play call. And I think a little bit of a tendency breaker there. Did you, did you have to jump in DJ? Were you wanting to jump in? I, I just thought that was, I thought that was an awesome call because you start out with Pitts out wide. He goes out, and a lot of the attention goes to him. Everybody's like, okay, finally here's – I mean, because he had three targets in the game, so everybody's like, where's Kyle Pitts? And now you put him out wide, everybody thinks, oh, they're definitely throwing the fade to him. You're not throwing the fade, but then like, okay, you don't do that. We're going to turn around, and we're going to hand it to our big back. You don't even do that. You slip uh, Lee Smith out, and it's an easy touchdown. I, I love the creativity. I love using the personnel you have to set it up. So I was just agreeing with you, Rack. Yeah, no, speaking of Mirage, you use the blocking tight end to slip in the end zone for a touchdown. So I really liked the play call there. But you also mentioned DJ Cordero Patterson. And as I watch this Falcons offense, the more I see the value in what he does. Now, I'm going to make this comment because I'm not at the Falcons meetings. I'm not at Falcons practice, so I don't know what goes on. But I believe he had 13 touches in the game, and I like that number for Cordero Patterson mm-hmm. because it seems like he finds ways to make plays, guys, whether it's his physicality when he goes up against a defensive back because he's just bigger than those guys, or he gets matched up out in space against a linebacker, and a lot of times he's got the footwork and the quickness to get around him. 
So I feel like he could end up being one of the difference makers for this offense just because of the versatility that he has at a bigger frame. He looks kind of like a wide receiver, yeah. but he also kind of looks like a tight end. <laughs> but he's got a whole lot more athleticism than a tight end does. This episode, in part, brought to you by The Home Depot. There are officially no more excuses about why you can't get your bathroom fixed or why you can't build a deck in the backyard. Not sure where to start? No problem. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on the Home Depot app. Their digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, image search, so you'll always know exactly what you need to pick up. Don't have the tools you need? Rent items from drills, blowers, carpet cleaners, generators, and more. Big or small, indoor or out, the Home Depot has the equipment you need. With the tap of a finger, you can reserve equipment ahead of time, swing by, and pick it up and get started. Ready to invest in your own tools? Browse through millions of items from top brands you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. By the way, be sure to join our Falcons insiders, Scott Bayer, Tori McElhaney, and Chris Rim as they debate all of the Falcons action as, as soon as it happens right after each game. Now, speaking of debate, Arch, I want to get back to you. Let's talk about the defense because I know that was one of your things as far as turning the corner. Did this defense turn the corner in the game against the Giants or was it merely a reflection of the Giants and the fact that their offense is not quite there yet. What side of the spectrum do you fall on from what you saw on Sunday? Well, I don't know that I can fall on one side or the other, uh, guys, and I don't like to ride the fence here, but remember the Giants lost two of their four receivers in the first 20 minutes of the game to injury, yeah. so they, no pun intended, that hamstrung them from an offensive ah, standpoint. Well done, you like well what done. I did there? Well done, well done. Uh, so I think that Daniel Jones was limited <laughs> to a certain extent there. But I do think that Atlanta had the ability to slow play. And by that, I mean bend, don't break scenarios where they were able to create plays down in the defensive red zone and their defensive end. Remember, it was the Grady, Jackson, Jerry, Grady Jarrett sack that thwarted the first drive. They forced a field goal. And then, as it turned out, it was a giant mistake. They, they, a giant mistake was a, a huge mistake. The ball snapped by the quarterback two in a row as it right went there, by. Right? Thank two you, man. In a row, yeah. just, uh, I'm here all week. Just make sure you take, your bar <laughs> take care of your bartenders and waitresses. Uh, <laughs> but that forced them out of range where they got in a long yard situation. Again, Atlanta can play the zone. You dump it off, you force a field goal. So they get two deep penetrations inside the Falcon territory early in the football game and only got six points out of it. And that was all they netted the entire half. So as much as some of it was self-inflicted, sometimes – if you make a team go the long way, if you make them put 10, 12, 14 plays together, most teams aren't going to be able to do that. Right. There's a holding penalty coming. There's an offside. Something happens to thwart the drive. A guy drops a pass. We saw it happen to Atlanta. Calvin Ridley drops a third down conversion, stops the drive. You, you, you have those things happen when you put those long plays together. That seems to be the flavor of this football team. And then creating that, that one splash play, a Fowler sack, a Jarrett sack, they get you off the field. Yeah, DJ, what about you? Are, are you feeling like you got to straddle the fence, or did you see enough here to think that the Falcons' defense is turning the corner and they're becoming a much more stout unit? I won't say it, you've seen enough because we got to remember it's still early in the season, and I think we're still trying to find that identity on defense. You're still trying to find out which guys can do what. And we've seen Dean Pease be multiple this season. We've seen a lot of guys do a lot of different stuff in different spots. But I will say this. There has been some constants. And when I say constants, there's some guys, like Art just mentioned, and Fowler the last couple of weeks has been consistent getting to the quarterback and getting the ball out. Talked about Grady being a, a force in the middle. How about Foyer being a guy that's consistently doing what he's been doing the last couple years? And then there's another guy you could add in there, Isaiah Oliver. Since he's moved inside, has been a stalemate on the inside. He's played pretty well. Had a really good play where he knocks the football out, strips it out, rips it out, and then, you know, gets the fumble recovery. Those guys are becoming the constants of the defense. Those guys you're seeing. And I think one thing that's really important is when you look at this defense, guys aren't running scot-free. Guys aren't just wide open. If you think about, okay, oh, yeah, the last game, Gronk had a touchdown, but that was versus cover two. That was just a good play call in that particular spot. In this game, balls are contested. 
guys are around the football. I thought T.J. Green, they went after him early in the ball game, but he showed up. I mean, there was a tremendous play that would never come up on the stat line. They throw a bubble screen out to the right side, and he keeps contained. And because he keeps contained and forces the ball back inside, Foyer comes from the inside and makes the tackle. Like, that kind of stuff you'd never see on the stat sheet, but that kind of stuff shows up on film and on tape, and those are the things you can build on. So I love the fact you got guys who are starting to play a bigger role, like a Michael Walker had a deflection in, in the game when the Giants were backed up. You got some guys starting to feel, I think, a little bit more comfortable about the spot they're in, and I think it gives Dean Pease a lot of opportunities with this defense to be able to do a lot of multiple stuff to help this defense become the style in which he wants. You know, I think the average viewer or or fan of the game, too, probably thinks that, oh, even though a new coaching staff came in and let's just call it January, and they've had the entire offseason to work with the team, that they've got things figured out. What they don't know, to your point, DJ, is this coaching staff is still trying to figure out their personnel, yeah. what play calls, what positions to put them in. And I think that's a learning process. And Arch, I'm going to throw it back to you because there's a guy that's really important to this defense that's not on the field and A.J. Terrell. So do you think that the Falcons have found a little bit of depth when you don't have a difference maker and a defensive back like Terrell in the lineup? Well, I think there's no question when a guy has to be forced to play – you get an opportunity to get your feet wet. You got to find out what a guy can do when the lights come on. You can talk about preseason games or whatever. AJ AJ Green is a former safety, played safety in college at Clemson. He came into the league as a safety. He was moved a corner during training camp, about halfway through training camp. And now uh, TJ Green steps up at that at that corner spot this weekend with AJ Terrell out. And all of a sudden you say, ooh, I, that, that, that was okay because mm-hmm. he's physical on the outside. He played leverage. Mm-hmm. Now, to Shock's point, I'm calling the game differently with, AJ, with, with, with uh, TJ Green at corner than I am with A.J. Terrell. But now I know how I can call it, and it's comfortable. Mm-hmm. If I can feed everything inside to Deion Jones and Foye Luokan, which is what they did in this game, those two guys combined for 27 tackles in the game. you got two speed linebackers that can go sideline to sideline. Funnel everything back in. Don't let anything go over the top. we got a chance to, to bend, bend, and not break and make teams make their own mistakes, and that's what you saw this weekend. Yeah, guys, I'm kind of in the same camp. I'll keep it quick, but I I still want to see more. Uh, it was definitely a good performance um, to build upon, but I'm not quite sure I'm saying that the Falcons' defense has arrived. To me, there was a couple too many screen passes that, that ended up being a little too easy. One of them, or Saquon Barkley, got out in the open, would have picked up a first down and kind of a game-changing play, but there was a penalty on it. So there's to me, there's still some things that need to be shored up a little bit, but Guess what? Dean Pease is going to say the same thing. No it's doubt. three games into their first season working with these guys. So, <laughs> guys, let's step back a little bit. We got the Falcons sitting at one and two this year. So I want to kind of get into some story time into your guys' careers. And, DJ, I'm going to start with you. Can you think of a time – and DJ's going to sit back there and say, well, Rack, we didn't lose when I was at I Georgia. mean, so I what, mean. What do you want me to say? Mean. <laughs> Can you give us a moment where you were the member of a team that got off to a slow start and then something changed either after that slow start or in the middle of the season that sparked things, turned it around, and maybe can give Falcons fans something to look forward to after this Giants victory? You know, Rick, I think I, I go back to – I got to go back to college because my first my, – my freshman year in college back in, in 2001 and – you know, we start the season, win the first game, but then you lose the second game to South Carolina. And obviously that's an SEC opponent, and you don't feel good about it. You end up, you know, winning three games, and then you lose two more games in the stretch, and you win three more at the end. So we end up, you know, losing some early, but then we found something throughout the year that kind of helped us propel us. And obviously the next year we go on and we won a championship. But I think – Going through those tough times, we learned about ourselves, who we were, and the kind of team we wanted to be because the expectation was always to win every game. Mm. And when you don't do that and you have spurts throughout a year where things don't go your way, I think you find out true character of guys in those certain spots. So I think the Falcons will understand that. I think they are going through it. Um, and there's still going to be some bumps in the roads this year. They're going to lose some games that maybe, you know, they were expected to win or whatever it may be, but they're also going to have some good moments like they had on Sunday where you find out about guys and about this team and you find a way to win games. And I think all that ultimately 
will help you down the stretch run as you start to become a more cohesive team and get this team, you know, going in the right direction. But I think you need these kind of games. You need some games where you lose. You need some games where, you know, everybody has to kind of look inside themselves and look in the mirror and say, all right, you going to be a man about it or you you, you going to stand up and, and go play? So uh, that was probably the only time where I could think about where, you know. <laughs> yeah, I knew mean, it was coming. Yeah, I mean, well, we had a, a up and down kind of season, but – uh, ultimately, I we we did learn a lot about ourselves in in, in losses, and I'm sure uh, it'd be similar to the to what the Falcons go through. Arch, how about you? A time that you can remember, maybe where you had some youth, because we know that the Atlanta yeah. Falcons have some youth in specific position groups, and maybe you experienced some of the same, and you were able to turn it around through the course of a season. Well, I'd like to say we turned it around through the season, but I, I'll be honest with you guys, I, when you get off to a slow start, it takes a lot of resolve, and you got to have some pretty good veterans to make sure you flip it around. And I think this team has so a couple older veterans on the team and then some middling veterans that I think can make it happen. But it's hard to do. I remember in 85, we started off really poorly. I wasn't even playing. I was a second-year man. But we had a bunch of young players on our team, and we got off to a horrible start. But we closed the season really well. We finished the season, and it, it was a springboard into the following year. We finished, I think, Three, we finished three and one in the Atlanta final four games of that season, and we started the next year four and zero. Oh. And and so it 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 was a springboard through the year, and that's hard to carry through the off season, but it did carry into our uh, our off season training and the excitement of the young players kind of carrying on. Now that's not what the fan wants to hear. They right, want right. we want to know about now. right now. Yeah, I don't want to hear about next season. <laughs> I ain't got time for next year. Yeah. So, but I do like the fact that they went on the road, and you guys know as well as I do, and anybody that's uh, that watches this game very, it's hard to go win on the road now, and you see period, teams. Yeah. You know, Tampa looked like uh, looked pretty good. They went out there and the Rams handed it to them, right? Yeah. So you gotta you gotta make sure that you are dialed in each and every week. And Styles make fights. We'll have a different fight with Washington this weekend than we had with the with the Giants this last weekend. So I think the confidence you gain from winning on the road is exponential over potentially even winning at home. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting that you mentioned Dave as far as the, the youth and there. I, I think back to uh, two thousand and two. And we had what everybody would remember that remembers 2002, a very young and inexperienced quarterback room. One that consisted of a Michael Vick, a Doug Johnson, and a Kurt Kittner. Uh You can't get a whole lot more young and inexperienced Uh in that quarterback room. Um, In that season, Dave will remember, we started one and three. We lost our opener to Green Bay in overtime, uh, which was was a killer. There's some irony there. Yeah, exactly, right? (laughs) Um, and we start the season, we had an early bye week, so we were one and three, but then we ended up picking up a victory and we ended up ripping seven straight. Well, we had a tie in the middle of the season. Dave remembers that against Pittsburgh Mm -hmm. Steelers. When I actually sat on the sidelines that game was 2002. I didn't even know that you could tie in the NFL at that time, full 15 minute (laughs) overtime period, but we went through a stretch where we were seven Oh and one after starting one and three. So it can happen. And to Arch's point, something has to spring the young players as well as the veterans to give them the confidence and the momentum to believe that every single game they can go out to win. So we'll see if the Falcons can do that and build off of that victory with the Giants. Now, let's go ahead and close things down as we end up taking uh, a look to this weekend. It was week two of the NFC East for the Atlanta Falcons. This time we'll be at home. DJ, give us your kind of early preview of the Atlanta Falcons against their opponent this weekend coming up with Washington. Well, I think it obviously starts with, you know, they got a guy who is from here playing quarterback, uh, went to Collins Hill and Taylor Heineke. So, you know, he'll be excited to be back in his hometown in front of his, you know, some of his uh, friends and family to play here, uh, stepping in. There's a familiar face that once played here for the Atlanta Falcons and J.D. McKissick, who they use a lot in a lot of different roles, similar to like how we use Cordell Patterson. He's a big part of uh, what they like to do. And I think the other part of it is uh, this Washington defense that everybody expected to be just so good coming into the season. But you look at them coming into this this year. Now they're allowing 432 yards a game, which is 31st, and 30 points a game, which is 29th. Uh, so this defense is not what uh, everybody expected it should be coming into this game. But at the end of the day, it's kind of what – it's coaches speak, but the Falcons have to play their – their style of ball game, and, you know, you, you don't worry too much about what they're doing as far as getting prepared. Uh, obviously, the adjustments will be there, 
but this is a Washington team that's looking to get a win as well. Um, obviously, they got their they got their buzz handed to them in, in Buffalo. I don't think many people expected them to go to Buffalo and get a win, um, but they got a quarterback now in, in Heineken who's got a couple starts on his belt and uh, will be excited to come back to his hometown. I know that. You know, everybody talks about you just. You- Start fans will start to think about the record of an opponent, right? Washington's going to come in here and they're sitting at one and two as well. So they're at a very pivotal point in their season. But Dave, if there's one thing that we know about the NFL guys that prepare the right way, they're not worried about what Washington's doing. Atlanta's got to worry about what they're doing. So thinking about what Atlanta needs to do by themselves. Yes, you can go ahead and point out some things that, that, that they're going to have to focus on with Washington, but what does Atlanta need to do this weekend to even their record at 2-2? Two and two? Well, I think one of the things that's going to jump out at me is can you create as a wide receiver core and or pass receiving core, can I create early wins or separation so my quarterback can get the ball out? Right now we're seeing Matt have to stand in a pocket and hold the football. And you can see anybody that plays that. Matt, uh, both Bashak and I both stood. But when, it, when it starts to take too long, your clock goes off in your head and you get a little antsy. Mm. Now, Matt, we, we, we were able to move a little bit. That's not what Ryan's <laughs> game is. He wants to climb in the pocket and get it out. And so guys aren't creating separation. This is a team that's going to play more man coverage than they've seen probably in the last couple of weeks. This is something that this team likes to do. They do have four former, or I'm sorry, seven oh. four no, former Woo. number one draft picks, up four front. of those guys up front that are rushing the passer, but three more guys in the second and third level that are former number ones that maybe played for somebody else that are on this team. So this is a team that's used to playing at a pretty high level. They played really well, as Shock said, a year ago. But if I'm a, if I'm a Falcon group and I'm a unit, and there's one particular unit in, in, in particular in my mind, it's my wide receiver core. I take a lot of solace in the fact that OZ made a couple plays, a couple of tough catches, Olamide Zacchaeus. Mm-hmm. You got some from Ridley. Ridley dropped the ball. He'll be working on that. And how do I get Kyle Pitts involved against some man coverage and get him the football more? He showed tremendous resilience, guys, and I don't think it can be overstated. He's the number one draft pick. Everybody wants to talk to him. Everybody wants to know, when is he going to make a play? He didn't make a play until the fourth quarter of the game, yet you didn't see him hang his head. There was no frustration. And when they finally got man coverage, he he runs a great route, a pressure break on a dig route, catches a tough grab of the guy all over him, and then wins on the corner route to put us in field goal position to win the football game. I thought that showed a lot of maturity for a guy that actually should be in his senior year at Florida right now, but he kept his resolve and he kept his focus. So when his team called on him, he made some plays. That's the group I'm looking for. Your pass receivers create separation so Matt can get the ball out. Yeah, and Dave, I'm kind of in the same camp. Like that was the one thing that watching the game is I wanted to see more explosiveness. I want to see Calvin Ridley beat somebody deep. And if it doesn't work the first time, that's okay. Dial it back up again later. But for him to just be doing five-yard hitch routes and eight-yard curl routes and 12-yard comebacks along the sidelines, that's all fine and dandy. But this guy is an elite talent. Like, I want to see him downfield, beating coverage, finding the, the, the open spot of the zone and making something happen. The same thing with Kyle Pitts. And trust me, Arthur Smith knows the same thing. He's going to try to find ways to get the ball in these guys' hands and let them be explosive because that's the type of athletes they are. That's what I would like to see against this team. And as you mentioned, Dave, it's not going to be easy with this defense. And I will say that to, to, to Arthur Smith's defense, and I'm not trying to create excuses here, but a shock, we've probably played – three of the worst defenses from an explosive play standpoint you could right. possibly play because yeah. all they want to do is play Sometimes. a shell. Yeah. They just want to sit over the top and make yeah. you throw all the ball underneath. And so it's really tested Ryan's patience, the receiver's patience, to go ahead and take the five, six, seven yard throw, the dump off to the backs, be positive, and find ways to move the chains that way. I think you're going to get opportunities like you're talking about, Rack, where you're going to see a little bit more man coverage this weekend and you might have some shots over the top. Yeah. Well, that'll be exciting to see if we end up getting some of those matchups and if Matt just has enough time to cut that ball loose and see if these guys can be ex- – all right, guys, that's going to do it this week. I know we got a lot more that we could talk about, but sometimes you just got to wrap it up. <laughs> uh, DJ Shockley, Dave Archer, great stuff as always. Uh, appreciate you guys joining me on this. Stuff, Rack. Great work. Appreciate you, man. All right, everybody, that's the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. We appreciate you joining us. Make sure you come back and join us. Next week we'll have some great – analysis and insight following the Atlanta Falcons against Washington. Have a great week, everybody.